Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome you all. Um, if you can hear me well, please write uh, number one in the chat window. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Pavel Zielinski. Uh, I'm Alten Marketing Officer and uh, I'm the organizer of today's event. Mm, I'm glad that you uh, were interested in the topic prepared by uh, Rafael. Uh, we like this and other IT and engineering issues um, because Alten has been working on them since 1988. So um, we are really appreciate that we could share our knowledge and experience. Uh, well, this time uh, during this webinar. Um, Alton um, is a global consulting company and which is hiring uh, in 28 countries, uh, 37,000 experts uh, in the IT and engineering field. Um, I encourage you to stay uh, until the end of this webinar and ask questions in the chat window with the question mark. Uh, for the best questions we have for you, a set of very useful gadgets, which will be uh, useful at work and beyond. And the winning question will be chosen by our speaker, Rafał. And next week, I will send uh, a gift to the author. So, well, you are all here because we are all interested in the topic, domain-driven design and what Rafał has prepared and what he is planning for us uh, today. But uh, so let's move further on and uh, Rafał, um, this webinar is all yours now. Uh, and at the beginning, uh, say a few words about yourself. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone, welcome. My name is Rafa Machnik. Uh, I'm here to share with you my thoughts around domain-driven design and explain you why I think this is something for everyone. So who am I really? I'm a cordonist player, I'm not joking. I wasn't planning to become software developer, software engineer from the beginning. Then somewhere like 10 years ago, I made a tough decision uh, and I went on IT studies, faced the world, learned a lot in short period of time. Started working as Java developer, then worked in different roles as business analyst, product owner, scrum master, and development manager. Right now, I'm technical leader in Alton, working for HSBC. I support, I support teams to deliver software on time with high quality and proper architecture. We do end-to-end -end solutions uh, for sales and HSBC corporate clients. And what's interesting here, I'm doing some front-end as well. As well. I like sports, I cycle a lot, I run um, every second day, I play football every week, and that would be all about me for this moment. So, let me ask you a question, let me just ask myself the question, is DDD simple? No, it isn't. So there is a very nice book that I read around five years ago. So the book is written by Eric Evans, you probably heard of it. It's, um, it has blue, uh, it looks like blue color. Uh, and when I read it first time, I really liked it because it was a lot of useful things that I thought that, oh, that's great to have them. It's like, it's very nice. It, there are tools that I, I can use in my daily work. That's brilliant. But I can admit, looking in the past, I, that I didn't understand this book properly. And this is the main reason, really, that I have this webinar with you right now. So is DDD getting more and more important for me right now after those five years? Surprisingly, yes, it is. So it wasn't a short journey for me to discover how important it, it is and how it, important it became. And for the book itself, it's more than, I think, it's around 17 years 
since it was published. So now before I prove that domain-driven design is for everyone, I would like to share with you my view on a few important things that led me to above conclusion. I would like to share with you my vision about ultimate mission, so we will discover what I think it is, communication, agile, and even storming. Okay, so let's move on to the first thing. So ultimate mission, most of the people on this webinar, I can assume, are dealing with software. You deal directly, so if you are on the webinar, you use software to be here, to connect with, uh, with me. And you might also work uh, directly on directly on software development. Yeah, you, you just might be business analyst, programmer, product owner, scrum master. That's, that's good. I, I hope I'll make this time interesting for you. So let me start with something like this. There are different kinds of, um, types of companies, and I would like to categorize them into two sets. First set that we, we like and some of us are working in, it, there are software companies. They do software for a living, so you know they employ people, software developers mainly, and they sell their products, which is the software. There are a variety of other companies that I will group in like as a separate group. I will put them in a separate group. Some of them might buy software from the shelf or from those companies, software, uh, software houses. But some of them, bigger ones, might have IT departments that some of that we might work in as well as software developers, people that craft software really. Okay, so because software is something, why I'm mentioning this, because software is something that uh, we are using on a daily basis. We sometimes even no, stop noticing this. Yeah, so now, now everything is connected to the internet. We can order, order things from different parts of the world. We can travel, we can buy tickets for everything almost. We can watch TV online, we meet people. Uh, you know, a lot of things in our lives is happening with the software and we don't notice it. We, so what those old things and those companies, because they are all like products of some companies, what, what those companies, especially those two groups, the software companies and others have in common, they, they need software for a specific reason. Yeah? Software is, is needed for a specific, specific reason to address specific needs, speed up something, some communication, you know, optimize business processes at the end. Okay. Now, I like software development. Imagine, how would I sit in front of the screen for more than six hours per day? I couldn't. So now it, it would be good for me to realize what could help me and you, because you might work in similar amount of hours in front of the screen, to make our work interesting and satisfying. I would like to tell you like a little bit, a uh, little story. At the beginning of my career, I struggled. I was working for bank in the IT department as junior developer. After a few months, I joined projects and I got frustrated. I was asking myself, why I can't use modern technologies? Why we need to all use old Java or like old frameworks? Why business is not willing to give us money to deal with tech debt? Why, why they are not, you know, letting me to deal with the tech debt? I, I, I perceived myself as, you know, very nice developer, young, youngster man, you know, trying to build something, something cool. And even if there are, there were some legacy technologies, I, I said, okay, let's move on. Let's upgrade them. So I believe sometimes you might get frustrated as well by similar reasons. So I asked myself a few questions. So who pays for my work? And then the answer is clients. Okay. Then who is the client? Okay. 
The next question I ask myself, why I do software? What motivates me really to, to sit in front of the, in front of the screen and, and type uh, strange things like my wife used to say. You, you, you are crazy, you understand it, you know? So I like to build things. I like to solve real life problems at the end. I, that, that's, that's my motivation. I, and I believe that everyone has some, some motivation to do things. Okay, so for me, software, as a software developer, is a really good way to find uh, uh, good algorithms and you know solutions to do things better, faster, and more automated. And the on the other side of the fence, we I also ask myself different question. So, how would I describe a good piece of software? Because I'm using software on a daily basis. So I would say the the good one is the one that helps me to make my life easier. Yeah. Okay. So what was wrong with me at the time when I was youngster, young, young junior developer? Why people didn't let me to do my job, you know, coding, uh, so doing, doing software. So I was thinking about writing code at that point. After some time, I realized that I wasn't focused on, on the right thing. I'm not doing software just for fun and learn and to try something new. I didn't realize even who, who is my client. I never met them. Okay, so if we focus on the right things, means like happy business, happy client, happy programmer. That's like simple equation. So then I realized, and then I re realized uh, what is important in my, in my role as, as junior developer and life became much, much easier. So my focus shifted onto clients and I got to know them. I started getting proper understanding of the problems that I was, I was meant to code in the, um, for the, in the applications. And once clients noticed this and users noticed that I'm eager to, you know, understand what they really want. They started to perceive me in different way. They, they started to see me as a partner eh? and they were more eager to, tr to trust me. And this gave me really the thing I wanted. So they, they started to give, give me time to learn and to try out new technologies because they knew that I'm going to help them really to solve the problem because I was, I was focusing on, on the right thing. So focus on the right thing is critical in my view. Okay, so what's the next important thing in this journey that I had? I think, okay. I would start with hypothesis that the communication is equally important as technical skills to become fully professional. Why? I'm betting here, I'm betting here that we all work in, in teams, smaller, bigger, in order to do things, we need to communicate. Communication has big impact on many aspects of, of our life. For example, our like performance at work means money we get, work satisfaction and personal life, of course. By any means, I'm not going to state here that you need to be a social butterfly and the nicest person in the room. No, no, no. I'm going to state something different. Quality of the communication is equally important as quality of our work. Whatever we do, if we don't communicate things properly, our work won't get noticed. People will focus on bad communication instead. Yeah, they, that's, that's life. So bad communication is as dangerous as, as bad code. So what, how good communication looks like in my view, it is clear. So. We are software developer people working with the software, creating the software. Uh, we need to explore, uh, express our thoughts in a clear, understandable way. We need to accept that, that not everyone is doing the same thing. We are dealing with people that has real problems and, and, they, and then they don't really care about the mechanics of the software. So we have to accept this and 
try to accommodate uh, to the audience. Okay, so we need to stay professional at the, like every, I really recommend staying professional uh, every time. So keeping our emotions under control, even in, when someone press our buttons. Okay, we need to be respectful. We need to face the fact that people have different views and opinions on the thing we do. So for instance, our application, they might not like it and that's their view. They, they have right to, to have it. Okay, and be honest. Really honesty, I, I learned that if you are honest and you, if you admit that you, you are wrong, just you'll get more respect that you, you can imagine. Say that you're wrong and people will respect that. Okay, but how we can, how we can get communication fixed easily and simple. There are two important things from my perspective that I will also use later on. So first, ask questions. Yeah, ask, there are no stupid questions. There are only stupid answers. So start asking questions. Then don't listen what people have to say. And if you ask questions, they will answer you. So listen, listen, try to understand. If you don't understand, ask question again. You know, and don't be the smartest person in the room, even if you don't, if you if you know know things. What is also very important, I think nowadays, turn on your camera. If you work remotely, turn on your camera. Uh, you know, emotions are not only in the voice, and if you don't know the person that you are calling, just turn on the camera, and it would be better much, much better. They will, you know, it, it helped a lot. Even, you know, it's like, maybe we'll come back to this later on. Let's move, move on. So what really helped me during my career? So I really like this book, Crucial Conversation, written by Joseph Henry, Ron McMillan, and I'll, uh, I'll, Switzerland. Mm, it helped me to understand mechanics. I'm a software engineer. I like algorithms and it really gave me the algorithm. So what is the algorithm it gave me? So it's very simple. There are seven things. So say, so whenever you have a conversation and you, and you, you, I mean, whenever I had conversation and the algorithm, I noted because really I might, I, I really, uh, I can say that I have this algorithm noted down in my notebook. And whenever I, I go for the conversation and I'm going to have a conversation that uh, is important to me, I revise the algorithm. So what it is, stay with the heart. Empathy is something that is positive in the conversation. So show empathy. Don't be like a stone. Stay in the dialogue. Even you, you see that the conversation is not going well, maybe you, it's it's good sign to postpone it when emotions will be lower. Yeah. Then the third thing, make it safe for other person because most of the time the conversation is also uh, hard to the to the second uh, to the second person. So try to try to listen, try to make it safe for them. Okay. Fourth thing, don't get hooked by emotion emotions. So how to do it? Stay with the facts. You know. Stay with the facts, facts, and you know, tell your story according to the facts. Fifth thing, find mutual purpose. Yeah, so if you find mutual purpose, like in the software development, for instance, if you have conversation that will be hard about the software, try to you know express it. You know, say that we are on the you know in the same team. Really, say it, say it loudly. People will, will you know will know will. will we're much more uh, mm, eager to communicate openly with you. And then the sixth thing, separate facts from your opinions. People tend like to tell stories. So try to stay on the facts side, agree on action plan. That's the seventh thing in the algorithm. Okay. So now you might think, is this man going to tell me something about DDD? Hold on for a sec. It is coming, I'm going there. Okay, another 
important thing before we start talking about DDD is Agile. What Agile is. So if we look at Manifesto, there are four, um, four points, really simple points. Individuals over the interactions over uh, and interactions over tools and, and some process. That's simple software over documentation, unless you do integration with software that you don't know how it works. Collaboration over the contracts, simple. Responding to the change because the only constant thing in the world is change. So we need to accept that. Okay. Um, now, my comment to Agile. So Agile is, is really time box. It's, it's iterative approach if we really think about it according to the manifesto. And there are few implementations that I used to work with, uh, like Scrum, you probably know it. Kanban as well. All of them has has one in common. They they do things. They they force you to do things in iterations. Yeah. So do one step forward, maybe step back, get feedback. Okay. Mm. So you deliver software piece by piece. Have chance to verify this. You give it to user. You do some demo, and they they give you some feedback. So that's that's the ideal story and. Uh, in the next iteration, you just apply the feedback. Okay, but if we do software, wh what it means really? In, in answer, it means that we need to be focused on the client, on the customer, in order to be able to respond to the change. And there are a lot of changes. Yeah? So fast response means chaos sometimes. Yeah? So um, that's very true because if we work in the team, as most of us do, in the team, people are, are totally different. They have different level of understanding of various aspects like technology, communication style, and business. Oh, let's stop for a moment, you might, you might say. So technology skills, communication, they can upgrade. No, yeah, yeah, of course, they can get some book, upgrade this, those skills, no doubts there. But how about business knowledge? How about it? Mm, I think that business knowledge is not something that you can do and upgrade, like, like upgrade up, up skill on your own. Why? Because maybe there are some commonalities when you compare, for instance, uh, one bank to another or airline company to another airline company or gambling company to another gambling company. There are some commonalities in the businesses. But the devil is kept in the details. And when we talk about doing software, uh, we need to consider those details. And, you know, if we don't have proper understanding, then we might end up in like infinite loop doing something and then getting feedback. Oh, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's wrong. We don't like it. And if we don't capture um, details correctly, iterations might never end and you know we might never succeed to deliver software that 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 is doing the the right thing if we don't understand if we don't understand why so i'm i'm tempting to say here that software is the reflection of what software developer understood really out of the business is the reflection correct is, is that reflection correct? Okay, so there is no single person that knows everything about business, any particular business. I, I don't believe in that. Maybe in very small companies. So delivery of the software most of the time fails because we, we are based, we, we do it based on false assumptions. So many experts in the companies sometimes, most of the time, are is isolated because they focus on their daily work. They are so good, so we give them, you know, comfort zone and just build the walls and let them work because this is how company makes money, most likely. So then business is complaining that developers are talking in different language. They are not delivering what we need and, you know, frustration starts. But aren't we in the same thing? Yeah, really? Even if we work in 
IT department, aren't we in the same team? Okay, but how to get business knowledge and how to really find those those important small differences? What, what, what's the method? What's the best method, probably? Okay, let's iterate over a few. So we can meet people. We can have organized meeting online or in the room. We can have people speaking, like the one, pe one person is speaking, or multiple people like speaking at the same time. And then it's very easy to get uh, disconnected or distracted because people come with laptops. They, you know, they get distracted easily. And if you do it online, sometimes you turn off your camera and you can go fall asleep. Okay, so other option might be to employ the architect. Ah, yeah, yeah. One single man telling other like group of bunch of developers <laughs> with some with ambitious uh, what to do, what needs to be done, and how to do it. Really, hmm. I don't think it's it's going to work. It didn't in my case. Uh, we might say that, okay, let's try maybe model something with UML. Oh, gosh. I don't remember how UML looks like, and I never tried it with the business, because if I'm an IT person I, and I don't like UML and I don't know how it works after this amount of time, so how, how, would I, how could I even you know, convince someone that is not connected to IT to, to do it with me? I don't believe in this. Okay, I doubt that we'll find the best method. I want to point out your attention to the method that works for me. And it works many times. It's pretty flexible. So what it is. Even storming. Here it comes. Okay. In 2013, Alberto Brandolini proposed this crazy idea. So he said, even storming is my pizza. Add your own toppings on top of that. Okay, so what even storming is? Is a workshop really? So it's a play, it's workshop where, where people collaborate, exchange opinions and, you know, stay in the same place either virtual or ideally in in the same room. And how to organize such event storming? So set the goal for the event storming, tell people what you want to cover, what sort of maybe you want to cover, um, how company works. If it's small company, you might cover that. For instance, you run the cinema and you want to cover from the starting point that your customers are looking at your web page or coming uh, into your office and trying to buy the ticket till the end when you buy the license and get them everything. So you might cover it on high level. There are different things. You might cover just part of the system that you have like payment system, whatever. So you have to invite for that uh, right people. Who are they? So people with questions. Most of the time, developers that has nothing to do with your your business, really. They are just developers, they deliver software, they are focused on the software development. And you also can inv invite people that don't have experience with particular area. They will start asking questions as well. That's pretty, pretty good. So that's the first group. People with questions, then people with answers. So we need to put some effort to find people with answers. You can think of business people that are doing business, some mar marketing people, C-level people, sales people, operations, support guys. Yeah. Those that might have answers, those, those that are using software in our case. And there is one last person that you, you need to have or designate is the facilitator. This, fa this person is, is responsible during the event storming. Uh, to move things and to not get stuck on, on the one thing. If we are discussing something for too long time, this person should try to move things forward. Okay. Then this person is also uh, responsible for agreeing on the legend because as I said, even storming is very flexible method. We'll show an example very shortly. Okay, so 
this is also um, a meeting and time when people should feel comfortable. So you need to give them possibility to speak up. Yeah? So how to do it? Provide unlimited modeling space online or on the wall. Give them stickies, simple things. Yeah? Reserve the time as well. Don't rush, don't rush. Get people time to think. So how to start with the, with the um, event storming? So first, uh, we need to start with domain events, orange stickies, and they might be called facts if people want that instead of domain events. And I would start um, with giving people time to add as many events as, as they want, whenever they want. Yeah, so put the event whenever they want. Then uh, facilitator need to go into the phase that we will try to order those events in the timeline from the left to the right, for instance, and put the events in some order. Find the duplicates. If the event is you know, not clear enough, try to uh, ask the question, capture the language, listen what people are, are saying, let them have conversation. That's what it really is about. You know, business people talking to IT people and people maybe not related to the software and, you know, from, from the different parts. Okay. Then you mm, probably, when you order the, the events, you order the board, you probably might start with putting some commands, which are the things that, uh, like, like on the, on the slide, a comment from given user triggered the event, triggered the event. An event might be also triggered, but by some timer yeah. or another event. Who knows? You can modify this. You can add additional things like rules. You can add some processes that maybe you want covered during the, during the meeting. Okay, you might find hotspots, things that potentially some gaps, some things that you, you don't know what they are, and set some boundaries. Let's look at the example. So I'll try to share my screen right now. And let's think, let's maybe um, assume for a moment that this conference uh, is is paid one. So you have to have, if, if you are here, you have to have a ticket and buy the ticket. So let's let's open up. One thing. Mm -hmm. And see an example of even storming. Okay. So if you remember when I was talking about the first uh, the first uh, moment of the even storming, so we, we just put uh, random events in random places in chaotic, like chaotic exploration of the domain. So we have events like seats picked because it might be uh, in the hall. So uh, tickets selected, tickets canceled, reservation might be canceled. So random things, QR code created and those kind of things. Then when we have, when we think that we have them all on the board, we try to order them and enforce some timeline from the left to the right, from the beginning to the end. If we identify some similar things, we might grab them together and agree on the proper wording. Because also a very important thing for the event storming is to have a conversation. Have a conversation and agree what is the, the correct name for the things that happen in our business. Okay, so once we, we do it, we can go to the further steps and agree on some details with the legend, which might be mm, action. So something that triggered event, like here. So reserve seats, that's the, that's the command, that's the verb and it triggered seats reserved, or maybe not no seats found, or mm, other things. 
We also might include some constraints, as we see here, for the reservations, some policies, some information that we might want to display to the user, and external system as well, because not everything might be covered by our system. And as we see here, there is payment system, which is, which is external maybe to our thing. We don't do payments our own, we just have some external system that do it. And this is how it looks like in a nutshell. Okay, let's move on. So what event storing is really about and what it gives to us? So event storming is kind of fun. When you do it properly, it, it should be a fun, it should be nice exchange of the thoughts uh, and different point of views. Because you have different people. You have people with questions, you have people with answers. Some people are maybe random, but they, they might ask some questions, they might uh, put some stickies. Why not? Everyone can do it. Okay, so it's powerful tool, actually, when you do it. Uh, it's engaging because you have to, if you let people speak and make it comfortable for them, you, you don't force them to learn UML, you don't force them to learn, you know, any strange rules for the meeting, just put stickies. You agree with them what is the legend, you know, they can easily learn what it is. It's efficient because you don't have to spend too much time, it's like, when you do it uh, with the facilitator and keep the time, it can be very efficient and you can do even storming even in, in one hour. I remember some even stormings that I did, they were last for 45 minutes and they were quite, quite good, quite successful and it's easy and it's fun. Okay, so even storming for me, it's, it's the great way to tackle the complexity of the software, tackle the complexity, maybe not only about the software, but about the, the business problem and understanding of why, why we do things. But because in the event storming on the, on the big board, we might discover that we not necessarily need to create yet another CRM. Because the process changed, that the way we, we do things changed. And it might happen that our systems, existing systems are not reflecting this. So let's, let's change it then. Let's change approach. Let's, let's experiment with it. We will discover that people are doing different things. Maybe they are they do something manual in the Excel because they don't have software or you know they never had opportunity to, to ask for some feature. So you might discover that they do things manually and they skip your system even. Okay. So what is challenging in terms of uh, in terms of doing event storming? Right now, I think the challenging part is the tools. Tools are challenging for doing online event storming. I showed you the tool that is called Myro. I used um, I use it. It's it's pretty nice. However, you if you do it remotely, you lose the aspect of collaboration and you no know, seeing people. Okay. So. Okay. What are the other challenges that you might have? You might have problems with ordering events. So there is one tip that I can sell to you. Try to do it backwards. Try to do it from, from the end to the beginning. Yeah, maybe it will be better for you. Okay, so is uh, even storming also suitable for existing project? Yes, it is. I tried it uh, a few times. When I joined the project that I, I wasn't from the beginning, uh, we did with the team even storming. And at the end, the feedback was that our business guys and users were you know, very happy about it. And we gained a lot of uh, knowledge about the systems because about the system and we got it together. And it was like our thing, our diagram that then we used to improve the software, improve the processes. And actually for me as newbie for the system, it was great lesson, great lesson really. Okay. Is even storming uh, something enough for the for like to start coding? Yes, it is. I I did it a lot of the time, and I I did I didn't need to have any diagram. Why should I? I if you have proper names on the cards, you just 
start coding using the the names and you know you get this ubiquitous language that is something that uh, ddd is also proposing okay let's go and talk about ddd maybe so domain driven design by the definition from wikipedia is the concept that the structure and language of software code classes names methods variables should match the business domain. This is proposed by, it's, it's taken really straight from Eric Evans' book, but I don't fully agree with this definition. And to me, domain-driven design is more. Uh, however, I liked the book and I read it. I liked the tools like aggregates, value objects, immutability, it gave me a lot of things to play with. I. I can say that after reading this book, I didn't know how to start, how to start. They were so heavy, those tools, they were so, you know, so heavy for me that I didn't know how to start. So what I did, I went for another book and this one is the red one. So implementing domain design, uh, Wolf Annen written this it was very nice a lot of examples in the code but domain driven design eventually it appears it's not about the code it's not only about the code let me tell you why so there are a lot of principles there in the methodology in this concept that you can mm, leverage in the code yes that's true but however the main goal for the for the software is to solve real life problems and software should really respond to the given needs and you need to understand what this need is in order to give like proper response in the software you need to understand what the what what the need is why you do it you need to you know you need to get from people really why they came to you but sometimes you might discover that they don't know it so here is the event storming. Here is the communication. Here is the you know the, the focus that you should you should do as person connected to the software development. You know, you you should go together with them. So that's why I put the equation like DDD is ultimate mission in my view plus communication, the good one. You know, because sometimes it's very hard to communicate as technical person with someone that is not technical. Collaboration uh like agile for the collaboration as well and doing things in small steps yeah and okay so is ddd helping me on a daily basis yes it is um I'm, i try to whenever i do something i some software i try to focus on the domain uh it really helped me to understand the domain it really you know it's the good beginning to start the question, uh, questioning, thinking, finding the ubiquitous language, uh, giving people chance to uh, understand things better, understand really why, and doing good models. Yeah, if you if you don't have good model in the software and you put wrong names, uh, you end up with translations, and then when it comes to changing software, adapting to the reality. It will be slow and slow and slow and slower. So you won't be able to catch up. And at the end, your software will be going to the trash. Okay, implementation of the software is important. However, we are going, uh, languages now, right now are going on the higher level. So they tend to be easier to, to use. Yeah? And think writing software is simpler. Yes, it is. However, the business domains are not getting simpler. Okay, so to me, the most important thing for the DGD isn't the code, is the putting the focus on the right things and understanding why. Through the collaboration, sustainable evolution, and finding the mission using the event storming, for, for example. Is DDD for everyone? I believe yes, because 
we work in the teams and as a team, I understand software developers and also the business and people that will use the software. So it's for everyone, really, for our stakeholders, for the business, for uh, product owners, for you know, business analysts. It's for everyone, really. We can have we have we have tools, we have things that we can use to deliver software that respond. That is the response to the needs that we identify together. Sometimes. I guess we you you might do domain driven design without even noticing it. Okay, is there any golden mean about about this approach? Hmm. I'll repeat myself. Domain driven design is not only about aggregate value objects entities. It's interdisciplinary thing, and it's for everyone. I hope you find. Uh, some answers and some interesting things in my in my presentation and maybe you'll we'll have some questions so here are the contact details for me feel free to drop me an email find me on linkedin linkedin and look on my blog which is also here thank you Thank no. you. Uh, so let's move to um, the Q and A session. Uh, the first of the questions. Mm, okay. So let let's start. When is it, and when it isn't suitable to use DDD? Can you think of any scenarios when DDD is not the way to go? Mm, yes, I I think there are some scenarios. For instance, if you have very simple, very simple thing to translate uh, one JSON into another JSON, and that's that's it, and there is nothing else that you should do. Uh, but elsewhere, as I said, domain-driven design for me is not only about the code; it's about the understanding, and I think we should have. Always, we should have this good understanding of, of why and why we do things. So most of the cases, I would say most of the cases, DD is something that would be useful. OK. Are you suggesting that DDD could entirely replace software design or arch architecture? Mm. Oh, that's an interesting question. So from my experience, uh, whenever I do proper DDD and event storming coming with it, I don't need to have uh, any other diagrams of the architecture because the things are you know described, the, the processes are described, and everyone knows what it is about because we crafted it together and software we, we talk the same language we use the ubiquitous language so i don't think there is a need to to have anything more to run the software so is it going to replace entirely architecture hard to say but for for the examples i had i didn't i didn't need to have any anything else and i think this is something that is worth trying to see how it works. And, and I encourage you to start. So let's wait for a moment because uh, I see that we have more questions. Uh... What about what about project documentation though? Mm, okay, so product project documentation. What what project documentation is? So if you if you are saying about the documentation that you, for instance, if you develop API that is going to be available public on public in public spaces, uh, you need to probably have documentation for it. That's that's the one documentation I think is important in that case. However, when you say about talk about the documentation that you need for the uh, for the development of the software, I think. Things that coming that are coming out of DDD are enough. 
So the event storming diagram is enough to start the implementation. So do we need any other documentation? For instance, the documentation of the how to use the software. Uh, I think not. This is something if I if if you force me to read the documentation before I start using the software out, probably so I'll I would leave the software and I will just shut it down because I don't like software that is not intuitive enough that I need to uh, go through the documentation before I use it. So that's my view. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Very good. Mm. I see that two more people are writing now. Maybe let's check Q and A. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get some more questions. What techniques and frameworks or methodologies you think goes hand in hand with DDD and give a brief explanation how they do. Personally, for example, I see multiple agile methodologies. DevOps are well uh, complemented. Would like to hear from you, an expert opinion. Oh, uh, yeah, so I think, so if you remember my presentation, we went through certain journey to prove that domain driven design is for everyone and it's not about the code only. So in the journey, we have this, like first we have and the equation, we have collaboration, ultimate mission, agile, and what else? And communication, as I remember. So is DevOps something that, uh, you know what, what? For instance, what what DevOps and Agile um, Agile is as a methodology? It it really goes well with DDD. And what other methods are are there? In my view, what other methods? Um, test driven development is also very nice. That comes with the uh, with the DDD. Why? Because uh, if you have model, you can easily apply some tests and verify the model with simple, simple tests, how it works, and maybe find out some conditions. And also, hmm, what else am I saying? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say that's, that's enough. That, that's, that's it what comes to my mind right now. We can go for the next questions. How to address scope change during the agile development process with DDD? When should you have another event storming? As soon as possible. As soon as possible. So if we do Scrum, maybe at the end of the iteration, if you do Kanban, you can do it as soon as possible. You know, if you feel that there is something not working, um, I don't see any better method um, other than repeat. Uh, even storming get get people really to talk about it. You know, that's that's the way I see it. Thanks for the question. What would you say to yourself those five years ago when you s would start implementing DDD in your projects? Also, what tips and hints would you give on modeling aggregates and bounded bounded contexts? Mm, the tips for me. Um, uh, the tips that I mm, could say. So first of all, it's not about the code only. So we know that we can deliver things fast. We have continuous development. We have continuous uh, integration things. Uh, we have clouds. So we have very easy ways to get something working. And the crucial part for the domain-driven design from my perspective, is to get correct why. If you don't get correct why, you will fail. Even if you have the, the, the best aggregates, the best model, if you don't capture correct why during the process of, even like before the, during the modeling and before the modeling on the event storming, for instance, if you don't, if you don't capture correct why, your projects and your software will be based on the wrong assumptions. So it won't fulfill the, the, the need 
of the business. So that would be my advice. So ask questions, get people, and you'll see if you do if you start doing some even storming sessions, you'll see that uh, not everyone in the business not everyone in the organization we will see i will look at the same things in the same way they will have different views and if they exchange things if if they exchange thoughts if if you force them to you know uh collaborate and talk to each other you potentially get them to know the company better you will you will know it better as a software developer and you will find out what they struggle with. Maybe they'll struggle because they, they don't know each other. They don't know how it's, how things are working. They use different names for the same things. Thus language is also very important. And about the aggregates and bonded contexts. Mm, I don't have much tips about this. I think you need to try you need to experiment and you don't be afraid don't be afraid to model you know if you are wrong you do the next iteration and you fix it and really you can refactor because in in the refactoring there's you know the refactoring to me is not about really to making codes look smarter or cleaner it is to reduce the complexity so that would be my advice. So if you do things and you you just you have some aggregates and some bounded contacts, and you you have some second thoughts, and you know it doesn't work, try a different way. You, you know, destroy it. Try a different way. Look at it in a different way, from the different angle. That's my advice. Thank you for the for the question. Have you done even storming after all working from home is productive as if it was in the office? Please name the tools you used online for this purpose. Yes, I did few even stormings online. Uh, we started simple with Giphy. However, it wasn't it, it wasn't working very well. Why? Because uh, only facilitator could just put stickies on the wall. And there is better tool that I discovered recently um, when I was preparing myself for this presentation and it's called Myro. Maybe I'll post the link to the chat. Give me one second. Give me one second. Okay, so I'm posting it. Cool. For instance, example. Okay, thanks for the question. Isn't DDD mostly about requirements gathering? Uh, use uh, requirements, use cases gathering. Hmm. Uh, I think mm, yes. However. You can gather requirements in different ways. Yeah, so you can gather requirements. You can tell your architects, "Hey, give me some requirements." Yeah, or you can uh, go to the business analyst and ask him, "Hey, man, we are starting projects, so you have to prepare some user stories or use cases." And the thing is, how you do it, really, that's the difference. In DDD, the the intention. Uh, it, yeah, it is. It is about for me. It's not only about the code. It's about something bigger. It's about finding out why you do things and what you need to do, really. So it's about requirements. But the thing about requirements is, is a little bit different. Requirements you craft together with your development team and stakeholders and like business, and you see. Those group, this group, as team. That's how how different it is for me. I'm very pleased to see such a famous person like Paulio Coelho at the webinar. So you're very welcome.
how would you compare uh, DDD to user story mapping? Do you still write user stories after event storming sessions? Session mm, user story mapping. Uh, uh, I don't know exactly if we are thinking about the same thing here. Um, maybe I use different name for this, but yes, I do write user stories because uh, uh, it, DDD is not contradictory to the agile and it's not contradict by it means it's not contradictory to scrum or kanban you can you can implement ddd approach uh with uh, along with the uh scrum or, or kanban and you can have your stories why not and stories might come directly from the model yeah, you might say okay let's try to capture a few events at the beginning or maybe you can have something like this like okay we can split our delivery uh, about the bundled context. Some, you know, some create some stories about one bundled, bundled context or one aggregate, and you know, establish some interfaces. So yes, I do write user stories in DDD. Thanks for the question. So I believe that's the that's, that's the last one. Uh, thank you very much for all questions. Uh, we are very pleased that uh, it was uh, this webinar was very interesting and you find, uh, found it uh, useful and um, uh, hope you spent uh, a very good time with Rafael. And uh, thank you, Rafael, that you shared your experience with us. Uh, and uh, at this moment, I'd, um, I invite you to hunt uh, Alton Post on Facebook, LinkedIn and especially YouTube, because we will publish, um, uh, because we have uh, been recording uh, this uh, webinar and we'll post it, um, I believe, from um, Monday or Tuesday. So it will be uh, available to watch it later or maybe share with uh, someone who uh, couldn't be here. So thank you very much. Wish you a very good evening and hope to see you and hear you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks again. Bye-bye.